What I'm about to share with you may change how you look at your breathing and rib cage forever. Between every single one of your ribs lies a very important and often overlooked muscle. If you take your finger and you place it in between your ribs, you feel a dense and fibrous tissue known as your intercostal muscles. Now there are two types of intercostal muscles your internal and external. Your external intercostal muscles are responsible for elevating the rib cage during inhalation and increasing the volume in your thoracic cavity. Without this increase in space, your lungs would quickly run out of room and not be able to fully expand. On the other hand, you have your internal intercostal muscles, which you guessed it, are responsible for depressing the ribs during exhalation and reducing the amount of volume in your thoracic cavity. Try this real quick. Take your hands and just place them on your side ribs like so, and take a breath in and then just fully exhale. Now from here, I want you to draw some awareness to the area in behind your sternum. What you're gonna attempt to do is take a full breath in from that imaginary center point while you're keeping your neck and shoulder muscles relaxed and just trying to create as much expansion as you can. Exhale and fully let that go. Did you feel yourself get a little taller, maybe a little wider or a little more expanded? This is the power of these tiny muscles that exist in between your ribs. They have the ability to give you this sense of expansion and space. Having the ability to create pressure in this way allows for a more full and deep breath to occur. Unfortunately, just like any other muscle group, they have to be exercised and trained. If they're not, they will begin to atrophy. And over time, what typically happens is we find ourselves in a more compressed posture. In this video, I hope to change that for you. By the end, you'll have a better understanding of how these muscles work and how to apply specific breathing techniques to just about any exercise or movement that you're already doing. Let's get into it. So for this first technique, I'm gonna use a toning ball. This is really just a Pilates ball. It's about four pounds and has some give to it. Now you don't have to have one of these. I'll leave a link in the description below of where you can pick this up. But if you have any ball that's about this size, even a soccer ball or basketball that's slightly deflated will work here as well. So what we're gonna use this ball for is a sense of feedback so that we can have some feedback into our ribs so that we can create some active pressure and resistance against it. So to start with this one, we are gonna begin on the floor and we're gonna work right around our serratus anterior or kind of this boxer muscle that exists right underneath our armpit. And what we're gonna to begin to do is just lean or apply some pressure into this. I'm gonna allow myself to get heavy and more or less just allowing the ball to kind of actively compress into my ribs. And what this will allow for is just a gentle pressure to get created against the intercostal muscles. It's just gonna expose those tissues a little bit. And then we're gonna to begin to inhale against the ball. So once I have a certain level of depth, I kind of feel that the tissues are somewhat exposed. We are gonna to begin to inhale into the ball or almost imagine that we're wrapping our inhale or the breath around the ball. You can spend anywhere between 45 to about 90 seconds in a given area. And you're gonna to have to explore different areas. Around the serratus anterior is typically a good spot to target initially. But you can also go into the back ribs, you can go into the tissues and around the pec fibers as well. Really any area that you may find that you can actively create good pressure into or you already have a lot of compression in. Now, because more often than not, people are already starting in a state of compression, we just wanted to expose those fibers and get those external intercostal muscles a little bit more involved in the state of the inhalation. And that's gonna bring us into our next exercise, which is gonna be starting to incorporate some load through a lying down dumbbell press. If you don't have access to dumbbells, you can also apply the same breathing cues to a push-up position. So we're gonna approach the breast cycle in two different formats. One is gonna be more conventional approach of how you're probably already breathing through something like a push-up or a dumbbell press, but one is going to be the opposite to that. To begin, we're gonna start on our back and we're gonna have both elbows planted just against the floor. And we're just gonna press the dumbbells away, just kind of coming to that midpoint. Now what we're gonna do at this top position to begin with is we're gonna start by going into a state of expansion. So we're gonna take an inhale at that top position. We're gonna slowly start to drop down on the breath hold, and then we're gonna exhale through the press. Now this would be your more conventional approach about how to breathe as you're going through both the concentric and eccentric phase of emotion, but it's also not the only way in which we can go about it. If we're trying to push max load, then that is probably gonna be the breath cycle that we want to employ. 
But if we want to start to increase rib cage expansion or get more of the intercostal muscles involved, then we can actually inverse this breathing cycle. And what that is going to look like is we're just going to allow the arms to come down almost to the resting motion. And as we're working through the press, that is when we're going to start to go into the phase of the inhalation. Now, the reason why we are doing that is because as we're going into the press, that is when we're getting the most concentric or shortened tension around the tissues of the pecs in this case. So as those tissues are shortening and kind of closing off on the front side, we can reciprocate that by bringing in pressure and expanding against that resistance getting even more expansion through the small intercostal muscles, but also bringing more volume into the tissues of the pecs in this case. Now we can also work through this in the opposite motion. So we just work through a press, but you can also start to work through this in a pull. So I'm gonna be using the equalizer bars behind me, but you can do the exact same breathing technique with a TRX. You can also use a pull-up bar, really any motion where you're gonna be going through this pulling phase. So taking the same principles from what we were working on in the dumbbell press, we can start to apply that to the pull. So we're gonna to start to go through the pulling phase. And as we start to get to the end range of our pull, we're gonna take an inhale against max resistance, and then we're gonna do a slow exhale as we begin to reset. Now, depending on where you may be lacking an ability to create some expansion or utilization of these intercostal muscles is going to change which phase of the motion you're gonna to wanna to start to incorporate the phase of the inhale. And what I mean by that is if I'm lacking an ability, we'll say to breathe into more of my chest or create more of an upright position, and where I'm gonna to wanna to prioritize the inhale is at the end phase of my pull, because that's gonna bring in a lot of exposure to these tissues, so I have a higher likelihood of breathing into this anterior side. But if I have a inability or I just lack being able to bring pressure into my back ribs, then I'm gonna to wanna to inverse that. So as I start to move away, or I'm going more into the eccentric of this motion, I can start to take my inhale, and that's gonna bias more of pressure coming into the back ribs. So using the toning ball in the first exercise should have given you a little bit of insight into where some of these areas are or where you may be lacking the ability to create as much potential expansion as you could. And now that we're employing exercise, we can start to do so under tension. And what we're gonna get into next is how can we start to apply that in a more dynamic way? Now this exercise requires no equipment, just your body weight, which is fantastic. So what we're gonna work on is, again, incorporating this aspect of pressure, utilizing our inhalation and exhalation as we start to move more dynamically in and out of a hinge position. So as you can see, to start with, I'm just taking a step, I'm pumping my arms back, I'm allowing my arms to come up, allowing myself to come into extension. And to begin with, just kind of get used to the coordination of this movement and just starting to get a rhythm and a flow with it. Now, once you have the basic coordination, we're gonna to start to incorporate the breath cycle. So on the step forward to start with, we're gonna start by going into an exhale. We're gonna take a step back and we're gonna come into that state of expansion with a inhale. What I would suggest is just allowing the arms to both pull you down and pull you back up. And you can imagine that as your arms are going up, your inhalation is just following the rate of that. So the arms are kind of getting pulled up and then we're inhaling and you're just kind of feeling the ribs just gently get lifted and expanded around that position. But only going as far as you can maintain a neutral position between your hips and your rib cage as to avoid going into an excess of rib flare. Now, just like we've done on the previous two exercises, we're also going to incorporate the inverse to that. So as we go into the step forward, we're gonna go into the inhale. And why we are doing that is because it's gonna get us out of this potential tendency of going into an over bracing of things like the core and the pelvic floor. This will allow us and our body to gain an understanding of how to receive momentum and impact into a state of expansion. So whether you've dealt with intercostal muscle strains or injury, or it's just a muscle group that you didn't even know you had, I hope you learned something new throughout the course of this video. And what you may have come to learn is that there is no perfect way to go about breathing. These intercostal muscles are highly responsible both for our inhalation and exhalation, allowing the ribs to both elevate and depress, to both expand laterally and then compress back to the midline but it's important that we work that in different types of motions, both through when the muscle is lengthening, but also contracting. Over time, as you continue to develop your intercostal muscles, 
Not only are you gonna start to get more width or the ability to create more width in the rib cage, but also more height. And it's pretty cool stuff. And if this is your jam, biomechanics, or just looking at the body in a more integrated and holistic way, then you can go look at another video I did on the body in some capacity right here.